Welcome to your new episode of The Startup Show. Today we're here at the Start Summit, a student-organized startup conference together with Thomas, the co-founder of Viscopic, our first MR company on The Startup Show. Welcome. Welcome back to a new episode of The Startup Show. Today we are here at the Start Summit 2017, the student organized startup conference, 2000 visitors, really exciting. And we have our first MR mixed reality startup on the show. The co-founder Thomas uh, of Wiscopic is with me here. So before we get into what you guys do, explain us a little bit who you are. So welcome from my side. My name is Thomas. I'm originally from, from Austria, from uh, Tirol. Our company is based in Munich. I moved to Munich for my studies, uh, so my background is in electrical engineering and uh, information technology and I focused in human machine interaction. Before I joined Viscopic, I, was, um, I had a previous startup and it was about gesture recognition, so we, like, uh, we could recognize physical thumbs up, so like a physical a Facebook thumbs up. So this was pretty much the, the first um, um, step into the computer graphics from, uh, from my personal perspective. After my studies, I had a, um, a research stay at the MIT in the US and I was um, researching in the field of collective intelligence. And so when I, when I returned to Munich, I was looking for an environment which is like passionate about, about uh, what they are doing. Yeah. So I like a bunch of interviews and I visited uh, quite a few of the corporates. But I never could really found like a, a place where the fire is on, where the people are really passionate about what they're doing. So uh, finally, I met my two co-founders, and they really were that <laughs> on fire about what they wanted to do. And then, so now in the team, um, what we are doing is we have one guy. He used to be like a, a technician himself, so he has like the, the customer empathy. He exactly knows what it is about in both roles, both like a. Um, um, being someone who is teaching others, but also being someone who is receiving help from the other guys. And then my second co-founder, he's he studied in, uh, computer science with focus mm -hmm. on um, computer vision. And then so the, the so, so before, before before we go into the startup of okay. what you do, sure, I, sure. I want to talk a little bit about entrepreneurship. So All I right. guess you just mentioned like you were deciding between I guess corporate and startup world. Yeah. Maybe yeah. you know a lot of my audiences are students from mm -hmm. from the universities I attended. So maybe you can explain a little bit like. What made you decide that, that startup is more interesting than corporate? Okay, so I mean, like the final question for me was, should I join like a corporate and learn from someone who is maybe more senior than I am, or should I like immediately jump into like a, doing my own business? So um, it was like a, a decision which wasn't easy to take because, of course, you never really feel quite ready to start your own business because there's always something you probably need more to, to understand before you start a business. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if you join a corporate, you never know whether the things you learn, whether they actually can contribute to maybe um, like your startup later on. The second point that made me think was, is it the right a point in time in terms of like uh, um, responsibilities. So like I just finished, I graduated from university. So I pretty much had no responsibilities whatsoever. So it was the, like the, the, the best, let's say, um, a point in time to just give it a try. Taking the risk. Like do, do the bold <laughs> actions and then just see what happens. Right. And then luckily I can say that in a position as an engineer, like the job market is really good at the moment. So even if like I completely um, um, yeah, fuck up with my startup, <laughs> I, I wouldn't be afraid of just, you know, calling up a few dudes and then having a job right, um, um, right away. So, with Copic, explain yes. us a little bit what, in, give me a pitch, maybe like, a okay, what, what do you guys do? Okay. <laughs> so at Viscopic, um, we are developing mixed reality training solutions. So you might think, what is mixed reality? So this is a, a, a term which has been here for like for, for ages. So like uh, um, per definition, mixed reality is everything between like the physical world and the virtual world. But Microsoft really pushed this, this new term and because they said, we are not doing augmented reality because this is much more advanced and much more immersive. So we call it mixed reality because coming from, from the reality and going to virtual um, 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 reality, there's a much better transition. And uh, Microsoft claims that for, for them, AR is more like a Google Glass. You have some like a header display, you have some yeah. like a simple signs. But what, what happens with the whole lens is that you can really like place holograms into your environment. The glasses right. understand your environment and you're able to interact with these holograms, and this hasn't like been possible before. Right. So, so maybe give me a short example of like one of your clients, um, yeah. how they're using the HoloLens. Right Definitely. Now. So one of our clients is a Deutsche Bahn, and then for them they have like a, a huge problem because in the next ten years they are losing four thousand out of eight thousand technicians. 
So they are now massively like a, because of retirement of retirement exactly demographic change is hitting yeah. hitting them really really bad. So they are now um, I'm recruiting about two thousand of new talents every year, but they neither have let's say enough um, trainers nor technical facilities to actually train these people. Mm -hmm. So they are looking for ways how to scale their training process. And this is exactly where we come into play. We develop a training solution for them so such they can um, put their like a rail infrastructure into the classroom. So on the one hand, we can reduce the demand for trainers. The second um, um, aspect is that for the students or for the people who are educated, it's now much easier for them to make the transition between theoretical information and really the practical things they have to do. Because until now, they have had like a, a written text and 2D drawings and it was really difficult for them to actually understand so what are the mechanics behind of what I'm actually learning. And so with the Hollands and with our application, it's like much, much easier for them. For sure. And so we conducted a, a trail, a, like a user study, and then the, the results were so convincing that the Deutsche Bahn said, okay, guys, this, right. is, this is it. Let's <laughs> That's continue. Great. And now we're in negotiations about how we can include this into the regular right. um, education. So program. you got passion and corporate now. <laughs> yeah, wait, I mean, even, even joining a, a, a startup, you always need the corporates because at the end of the day, those are the companies who actually have the, the spare money yeah. to also like sponsor projects to do some like PRCs, which like uh, other startups don't have. So this sure. is, you always, you always will be in contact with the yeah. corporates. Tell me, I, I want to wrap up to, to show a little bit about your, your market expertise in, in mixed reality. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can give us a little bit of a scope, like where are we going to be 2020 with uh, mixed reality? So it was like really interesting for us. We started two years ago in 2015. And then we tried pretty much every uh, our smart glasses which were out there, like the, the Epson or the Vusex or the Google Glass even. And then when we first received the Hololens, for us it was really like a, a quantum leap, you know, coming from just, you know, bulky and uh, uncomfortable tiny screens to something which is like, oh wow, this is really, this is really a game changer. And then let's say if you project this rapid development into future, I will definitely see that uh, these mixed reality devices have the chance to disrupt the uh, entire industry and to also change the way how we interact with the environment. And then the funny thing is that everything for us is like 3D, but we always um, um, interact with 2D content. Like even on a smartphone, even on a computer screen, it's always 2D interfaces. And I think this will be like a, a significant change in, in, in how we will interact with, with our environment. Thank you very much for, for your time. Uh, it was my first MR company, first German company, if I remember correctly. Yes, yes. Uh, it was great to, to have you on the show. Thank you very much for tuning in, and I'll see you very soon with a new episode. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.